Hey, good morning. Was that Brie Larson last night in the in the movie um, playing a mushroom? I think it was playing like all the mushrooms of the planet. Super cool movie. Um, I'll tell you about it on the ride. Give me about half an hour. I gotta finish getting my taxes together, and I gotta get bundled up. It's cold out there, folks. Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast and Vlog. I'm just a dude on a bicycle trying to evolve as a filmmaker, poet, and human being. Today, we're talking about mushrooms. <laughs> and this great movie I saw last night is called Fantastic. Hey, good morning. It's called Fantastic Fungi. Fungi, depending on your orientation. I did not write the director's name down, or the writer's name. I think the writer's name is Mike. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, one semester of Spanish, Spanish love song. Me amo Mike, me amo Mike. That's not exactly it. Look it up on YouTube. Anyway, how's your ride going? Boy, as predicted, it is freaking cold out here this morning. It's about 21 degrees. Jennifer, I don't know how you do it. She does this. She leaves the house a little earlier than I do on a bicycle in the dark. It's amazing. I don't know how she does it. <clears throat> All I will say is, if you're in a cold climate and thinking about bicycling and you're not used to it, unless you love the cold, and unless you love being on a bicycle, I don't recommend starting this time of year, man. It's you got to be in the in the groove before the cold hits, I think. Anyway, that's that's how it is with me anyway. So how is your ride? What's it like where you are? What's your ride anyway? You get around from place to place. <clears throat> I like to tell people I've got this nine and a half hour bike ride every day with a eight and a half hour break in the middle. <laughs> yeah, get it because it's half an hour there, it's half an hour home, and then I'm at the day job. <sighs> I'm just being a butthead, actually. It's just cold. It's too cold to be funny. But man, it's a beautiful morning. So this morning as I was leaving, there was a police officer at our house. Thank you, sir, for showing up. I really appreciate it. Hey, morning on your left here. There's been a uh, motorcycle parked out in front of our house hey, for uh, about a week now. I was gonna take a photo and report it to the police department, I guess is a possibly abandoned vehicle because it's kind of parked in the intersection. I took a little video of it, but I didn't want to get in the cop's way. I got to say, we have the friendliest and most helpful police department of any town I've ever lived. <clears throat> and that's probably not fair to say. I've only lived a few places and only interacted with a few police officers, so that is a statistically improbable assessment. <laughs> but no, really, Boise Police Department, thanks for all you do. Thanks for the, uh, what you guys are awfully friendly, polite, and I always uh, get a sense that you know what you're up to. I really appreciate that. So last night, we were at the Egyptian theater again for another film. Hey, good morning. Called Fantastic Fungi. <laughs> and it is true, Brie Larson narrated the voice of the mushrooms. She took on the character of the mycelium fungi of the planet. And Andrea assured us they're always going to be here. Even after we're gone, probably. <laughs> but no, it's a hi I highly recommend this documentary. It's uh, 
It's one of those that I recommend not for its production value, although it was fine. It's neither here nor there. You know, documentaries are tough because you got to get everything as it's happening and you don't get setups and a lot of times you got to shoot it while it's happening and whatever situation that is. <clears throat> but computer generated images, CGI, just computer animation, I guess, in general, has gotten to the point that they were able to really show like what happens with mycelium underground, which is really cool because it's a really difficult thing to see because, well, it's underground. <laughs> hey, good morning. So basically, the earth is filled with mycelium and this is a, it's a plant-like structure, a fungi, fungi, that is the plant. And then like when we see mushrooms, those are considered the fruit bodies. Now, you probably know this, but mushrooms have their own kingdom. Like animals have a kingdom, plants have a kingdom, and mushrooms have their own kingdom. Genetically, we're more like mushrooms than a lot of other mammals even. How crazy is that? But this film had some of our favorite enthusiastic advocates and evangelists of the uh, beauty of the mushroom world. Paul Stamets was featured pretty prominently. Uh, all right, a little all right. Got a lot in the bags today, so you gotta be careful. I'm tired of breaking axles, man. I know, you're tired of, tired of hearing me talk about breaking axles. Anyway, Paul Stamets was in the film, and I, th I figured they were just kind of leveraging his name because a lot of people know it. But no, he, was, uh, he carried a lot of it. Michael Pollan, of course. Uh, I've started reading his book, How to Change Your Mind. It's about psilocybin mushrooms. That is, mushrooms that have psychometric effects. <laughs> Mushrooms that people are starting to use now, we found out in this film, there's a group, I don't remember if it's in Oregon or Washington, I think it's Oregon, that psychotherapists are using low, dosage, low dosages of psilocybin from magic mushrooms as psychoactive ingredients to guide people through major issues in their life. Hey, good morning. So the, the tests that we saw last night were three people who are in late stages of terminal cancer and how through this therapy with the mushrooms and a licensed guide, we're not talking about party drugs here, they're able to work through their fears. Now, the thing about mushrooms is we're gonna get into a couple of my favorites here in a second, but is that the psilocybin mushrooms are neurogenic and they're also, what are they called, neuroadaptogens? They basically, they work with the capillaries in the brain and can literally bridge and form while the psychoactive ingredients are in you, new neural networks. So like, it's almost like the mushroom can sense your will, what you want to be doing, and it creates new neural networks around the parts of your brain that are keeping you from that. So like these people, they're, you know, they're facing death, like straight up, you know, real human stuff right there. And through the ther therapist's work and the mushroom's work in the people, in like, like one to three sessions, folks, low doses of this mushroom in one to three sessions, these people are able to face fear, the fear of death head on, and they become less anxious about it. Now, it's been reported for years, like since the 40s, that people have used it to um, 
help cure addictions. Basically, any mental malady that you've got that are choices, like I've got choices, we've talked about that too much, that sometimes it's easy for me to decide not to drink, sometimes it's harder. Or in my case, it's just harder to stop drinking once I stop. Anyway, I'm very intrigued by this. Um, and that's all I can say about that at the moment. I'm very intrigued by that. Looking for opportunities to uh, meet with a Cabensis psilocybe. If anyone knows anyone. In Oregon, of course, not in Idaho. <laughs> anyway, and then of course they talk about, you know, the, the basic theory of the evolution of the planet was that it came from a fungus that all of life on Earth, carbon-based, came from a fungus. And this is a, a lot of people thought this, a lot of the ancient cultures thought this. Peter McCoy talks a lot about this in his book, Radical Mycology. Another one I haven't read, but really, really want to. Looks really good. Uh, let's see, who else shows up in this? Oh, we got, hey, good morning. Andrew Wiles showed up in it. And of course, he's been a proponent of the just general health benefits of mushrooms for a long time. They talked a lot about the, the lion's mane. It's one of my favorites. So I order these from a place called Four Sigmatic, S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C. Look up mushroom elixirs. That's probably what you'll find. <clears throat> but basically, they've, they harvest dry and make these mushroom elixirs. They also do coffees and stuff. Jennifer was telling me that she was researching this, or her research, personal research on just health and such, led her to a bunch of information about these mushrooms recently too, so. Not to the effects of the uh, psilocybe mushrooms, but the lion's mane is also a neurogenic mushroom. Hey, good morning on your left. So drink an elixir of this in the morning helps with your concentration throughout the day. Probably don't want to do that at night unless you like concentrating on sleep. <laughs> no, if you like concentrating on sleep, the reishi mushrooms, anti-inflammatory, antiviral. Hey, morning on your left. Oh, we got a lot of folks out this morning. Hey, morning on your left. The reishi has been used. It's called the Li Qing in China. For thousands of years in China as a uh, anti-tumor, anti-cancer, like mostly for digestive tract health and anti-cancer properties. Now that one, you can't just eat a reishi. Generally, they make it into a tea. In the old days, I don't know, maybe if you get it medicinally, you can extract it now or something. Just get the compounds you want out of it, maybe. That seems like a lot of production. I'd rather just have the tea. But I drink this uh, reishi elixir from uh, Four Sigmatic at night. Anti-inflammatory. It's got an overall soothing, healthy feel and taste, so it helps me sleep. Supposedly, it can help with your biorhythms, your sleep patterns. So if you're willing to meet it, get in bed at roughly the same time, drink, this, drink some reishi before bed, evidently you sleep like a baby. But all of my friends that have babies complain that they're never sleeping because the babies are up all the time. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> that was a joke. <clears throat> Who is chilly? My favorite of these is the chaga mushroom. It's got a ton of antioxidants. It's a great for general immunity. Russia's been using it as an anti-cancer 
treatment for since the 50s. No one's done a lot of uh, scientific research on this, so it's considered hearsay. These are kind of the big, uh, big powerful mushrooms that, that folks use medicinally. <clears throat> but the chaga is great. It grows in trees along the river. It grows kind of like, uh, it looks like a mold or like the tree is sick or something maybe. But for overall well-being, I love having a cup of chaga in the morning. The reishi at night makes me feel so good. And then the lion's mane too. Man, you can eat those if you can find those. They're these long tenderly things. And they have a flavor similar to like lobster or crab. Especially with butter, evidently. I can taste it without the butter and I'm not much of a butter fan, so. Anyway, I highly recommend this movie. I, uh, I kind of got into mushrooms back in 2009 after we went to a lecture with Paul Stamets over at the Public Library in Anchorage. That's where I got that idea for the Stropharia Raguzo annulata tattoo on my left arm. Bruce just did so beautifully. Yeah, we'll talk about that some other day. Anyway, folks, if, if you are interested in participating in a state of wonder, I highly recommend the film Fantastic Fungi. It's amazing what mushrooms have been used for, what they can be used for. Hey, the uh, micro-remediation stuff that uh, Paul Samus does, cleaning up oil spills and such, so good. Hey, folks, that's it for me. Go watch Fantastic Fungi. Go read Paul Samet's Mycelium Running. And prepare to be inspired. Prepare to have your mind blown. Hey, folks, thanks for riding with me today. I really appreciate it. Whatever your ride is, I hope that you get a chance to be on it today. Even the mushrooms aren't going to keep us from, uh, <laughs> from, from dying someday. So uh, whatever your ride is, I hope you get a chance to be on it today. Thanks so much for riding with me. It's the only ride we get. I look forward to riding with you again on Friday morning. <laughs>